In this video, we will go over the basics of refractive errors. We hope that this will serve as a guide for patients and families to understanding blurry vision and the use of glasses. Our eye is like a camera, constantly taking in images of the world around us through a lens and projecting it onto the screen in the back of the eye called the retina, where these images can then be processed by the brain. Refractive errors occur when structures of the eye involved in this process fails to focus the object exactly on the retina. This results in a blurry image, just like when your camera is out of focus. There are four main types of refractive error, myopia, hyperopia, presbyopia, and astigmatism. We will go over each of these in detail in the subsequent slides. Refractive errors are very common in the general population. The majority of individuals have some degree of refractive error, although most do not require correction. Refractive errors requiring correction are uncommon in preschool children. However, by late adolescence, nearly 20% of children develop refractive errors that require the use of glasses. Now we will go over each of the different types of refractive error. Myopia, also known as nearsightedness, is when the focusing power of the eye is too strong or the eye is too long, such that the image of an object is focused before it reaches the retina. This problem is worse when objects are far away and require less focusing power. Thus, things further away are especially blurry for people with myopia. Myopia rates increases throughout childhood with the greatest number occurring during and after puberty, when the eye undergoes a growth spurt just like the rest of the body. As the eye grows through childhood, myopia also tends to become more severe before eventually stabilizing upon reaching adulthood. In contrast, hyperopia or farsightedness is when the focusing power of the eye is too weak or the eye is too short such that the image of an object doesn't focus until after it has reached the retina. This problem is worse with near objects that require more focusing, making near objects more blurry for hyperopic people. Mild hyperopia is normal in infants and children and usually does not require correction as the lens can squeeze to increase its focusing power to compensate. Presbyopia happens when our lens loses that squeezing power as it hardens with age. This is especially problematic when we're looking up close or reading, as our lens usually work extra hard to converge the light and focus it on the retina. Because the elasticity of the lens decreases with age, this is more common in older adults and similar to hyperopia, results in an image focused behind the retina. Astigmatism is when the surface of the eye, called the cornea, is not perfectly spherical. Instead of being shaped like a basketball, it is more like a football. However, unlike the exaggeration shown in this picture, the changes are usually subtle and not visible to the naked eye. The problem with having a non-spherical cornea is that the lens is not the same in all directions. Therefore, light coming from different directions cannot focus at the same point. This leads to multiple images of the same object at different places along the visual axis, making it blurry from the viewpoint of the retina. This can happen whether the object is near or far. Astigmatism may also occur in combination with myopia or hyperopia in the different directions. Treatment options for refractive errors include glasses, contact lenses, and or refractive surgeries. Not all refractive errors require treatment. Many small errors do not require any treatment. The threshold for when a child should be corrected depends upon the severity of the refractive error, the age of the child, the caretaker's preference, and other factors. Symptomatic refractive errors, even when small, should be treated. The end goal of all of these treatments is to allow light to focus back onto a single image on the retina, whether that is through using extrinsic lenses in the case of glasses or contacts, 
or permanently altering the intrinsic refractive structures of the eye through surgery. For example, in myopia, because the focusing power of the eye is too strong, we add a diverging or minus lens to allow the light to spread out more before reaching the eye, balancing out the extra focusing power. In hyperopia, we do the opposite and add a converging or plus lens to help the eye focus the light a little bit more. Similarly with presbyopia, we add a converging plus lens to compensate for the loss of focusing power of the hardened and flexible lens so that light focuses a little sooner as it reaches the retina. For astigmatism, where the eye is not perfectly round, we use a cylinder to balance it out, stretching the light coming in from one direction without changing other directions. We can even change the direction the cylinder is oriented to balance it in any direction the eye is tilted. Regardless of the type of refractive error, which will determine the type of lens used, the first step is to get a precise measurement of these errors so we can find the correct lens to fix it. These are some common equipments we may use in the clinic to get your measurements. Finally, when should you worry about refractive errors in your child? Blurry vision is the most common symptom. Children may also complain of eye strain and tiredness or headaches, especially after activities requiring vision. In children who are not yet able to complain of these symptoms, you may notice signs such as squinting or rubbing the eye, crossing the eye as they try hard to focus on near objects, or other behaviors suggestive of a vision problem. If you notice any of these signs in your child, you may want to consider bringing them in for a detailed eye exam.